Hi, I'm Karen from I Fix Things, and I really do, because I oftentimes break things. For example, I have this fantastic Dremel 4000 tool, which is a wonderful little thing for hobbyists. Um, but every now and then, hobbyists get a little vigorous with the tools, and they use the wrong tool for the right job. For instance, I was trying to cut through a bolt, not a little bolt, a big old honking bolt, but I thought I'll just take my time. You know, I've got a big enough blade. See, I got a big enough blade right here. And if I take my time, I'll make it through this bolt. What could happen if I just take my time? I'll just keep drilling and drilling and drilling because I, I didn't have any, any other tool with me and I needed to get the bolt off. Well, as is the habit of smaller tools like this, it stopped working. Want to know why? Because I should have used a tool like this. This is called an angle grinder, and you put a metal blade on it, and zing, you get through it and you get a lot of sparks and everything like that, too. Pretty cool. Um, so my Dremel tool stopped working on me, and as is my habit, Instead of throwing something out, I figure, how bad can I make it? If it's not working, it's dead. It's destined for the trash can anyhow. So let me take it apart and see what I can do. Um, and again, here's my official disclaimer. This is what I do to my stuff. You can do to your stuff what you want. I'm just sharing with you what I've done. Um, what you do is at your own risk, at your own responsibility and all that jazz, okay? I've got two videos set up, and I'm hoping that it'll work. I'm going to go ahead and take apart this Dremel. And then we're going to take a look inside. All right, here we go. And I'm going to see if I can turn this around so you can watch me doing it from here as well. Yeah, great lighting. And I'll see if we can videotape some of it from here as well. Let's put on the little glasses. Um, to get into this tool, you're going to need a Torx bit. Um, they come in really cool increments, 5, 10, 15, 20, and so on. This is a Torx 15. All right, here we go. So we're going to check a couple of things um, to see what components we can find that might be broken. And just so that you know, I'm, I am not an electrician. I'm not an electrical engineer. I'm not a certified journeyman or any of that stuff. I just know how to look for broken things. Um, and so let's just take a look inside and see what I did to it. First thing you want to do is you want to take out the brushes. Uh, we're going to take the brushes out. Pretty simple. I'm just going to unscrew it right here. Take that out. And inspect. Okay, so this brush is fine. Let me check the other brush. You know, because these are just made out of... Um, Highly conductive material called graphite, but graphite is also very um, fragile. So my graphite brushes are fine. I'm going to go ahead and put everything in a little pile right over here. Let me... T that was not going to make it through this bolt. I'm, I'm thinking it might have overheated, so let's take a look inside. And my hopes are, this is a Dremel 4000, my hopes are that the guts of this are similar to other Dremels, so that maybe, maybe what's wrong with mine might be the same thing wrong with yours. So I'm going to stop talking right now and get to it. Don't forget, you got to take off, if you've got one of these little hanging clamps, you got to take off the hanging clamp. Everything is looking good, and I just accidentally, this is this stops the drill from rotating when you try to unscrew the collet, so I just, I just knocked that off, so I'm going to try to put it in the way I found it. I, I'm, I'm always um, 
type A when it comes to this kind of stuff. Leave it alone if you can. There. And the spring still works. Okay, leave that alone. So here is what I'm noticing real quick. Here are the guts of my Dremel. It's got a variable speed gizmo on off switch and all that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm not even going to mess with any of that because what I want to test, I don't know if you can see it. Right there. Yeah, there it is. See that? That is a thermal fuse. It's a single use thermal fuse. Um, right there. So, uh, let me see if I can get a better picture. Let's get up close. Let me make it lighter. Okay, wrong way. Can you see that? Right there, right there. That thing that has a little point on the top of it. What I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test it in place. You can test it in place, and I happen to have a tester right here. Um, I have a multi tester. I'm gonna put it to what's called continuity. Sometimes they have like a little alpha and a omega right there, but I just want it to beep. Continuity means, do I have electricity going in a loop? Is electricity actually passing through a piece of metal and going? And the way to test it is you can, you test, you always test your meter as well by going like that, okay? So I'm gonna test the continuity on this bad boy and see if the thermal fuse has stopped working. And the way these thermal fuses work is like this. Um, these small little ones, and I'm gonna show you, I've got, I've got a spare, I've, actually I've got a couple of spares. Right here. Inside of there is a small metal bead. And they're made out of different alloys and such because this particular thermal fuse is made to reach 110 Celsius. And what that means is once this bad boy gets 110 degrees, that little bead melts, the spring that's attached to it unsprings and it separates the two pieces of metal in there, thereby stopping the electrical flow. Now, this is a, a blessing and a bane at the same time. The bane is dead gummit. I don't have to have a spare 110 Celsius uh, thermal fuse. But the blessing part of it is Oh, yay, my Dremel didn't ignite in my hand while I was trying to drill through a big old hunk and bolt like I shouldn't have. So these are really great things, but they're single use. They don't reset or anything like that. So we're going to test this here fuse with this here. And it doesn't matter if you put the red or the black on any side. You just touch the two pieces of metal if I can. Here, let's, see. let's see. Okay. Can you see that? I got nothing there. And I'm, I can't reach down to the bottom. I can't reach down to the bottom. Oh yeah, I can, hang on, there it is. There, oops, there, and there. And it's not making a sound. And what it should do is it should make a sound. So I'll show you it making a sound, ready? Right? Um, and I'll show you on the new part that I bought. I had a hunch that it, it had overheated. That was my hunch, so I bought a new part. And I'm going to show it to you right now. And what this is, this is the brush holder. And built into the brush holder is a thermal fuse that says, if this device gets too hot, I'm stopping. And, and instead of igniting. So again, that's a pretty good deal. Um, and we're gonna test this. We're gonna go ahead and get to continuity. Thank you. And I'm just going to put it on one end. You can see I've put this on one end. I'm going to touch the other end and I got continuity. And just to prove that it doesn't matter, red or black, I'm going to go red on this end, black on this end. So that means I've got electricity, a very small charge, but I've got electricity going through it. Pretty handy, right? So what we're going to do 
is we're just going to go ahead and take out the old part, pop in the new part, and this should be good to go. Okay. All right. Let's get closer. I'm taking out it and taking it out of here. See, it, it, that's just it. It doesn't do anything else because it's setting on top of a piece of metal right there. So I don't have to solder anything. I don't have to do anything. I'm just going to take the old one out and pop the new one in. And um, it's I've noticed that the old one has a smaller thermal fuse than the new one. But it doesn't get in the way. So let's go ahead and do this. There we go. Got it in. Now, fortunately, I didn't wreck too much. I didn't jiggle too much. Let me go ahead and pull this out a little bit again. Um, I'm going to make sure that this is still running smoothly. It is. And I'm just going to put it all back together and see what happens. I always like to keep checking the armature to make sure that there's nothing binding up against it when I put electrical motors back together. I'm, I'm not going to, you know, cinch this down with like, you know, Wonder Woman force or anything like that. I'm just going to seat them gently. Because if I'm using it so vigorously that the screws can vibrate out, I'm using it too vigorously. And that feels good. Go ahead and put the hanger back on. Go ahead and screw the front back on. Don't forget to put the brushes back in. It doesn't matter if you try to do anything else because it's not going anywhere if the brushes aren't in. So one brush. And the cool thing is that the hole is shaped the shape of the brush. So there's no way to put it in wrong either. Here's a trick to doing this. What I do is I seat it, I go backwards a couple turns until it clicks. Hold on. There it is. And this doesn't have to be seated like a beast either. Just set in there and that's good. Same here. Come on, you've got to level it a little bit here. Okay, there it is. I'm going to hear it. There. That means the thread's engaged. Okay. And let's give it a test. You can turn it down on low because it has a extraordinary. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, it was a good hunch, and I didn't have to throw this away. They're over a hundred bucks, so the, you know, if it's destined for the trash can, I don't mind taking it apart and see if there's something I can put in it. So again, it's a brush harness that has the built-in thermal fuse right there. See it? And this is rated for 110 degrees Celsius. Thermal fuses are rated for all kinds of different temperatures. And this is for 110 Celsius. And it keeps this from burning up. And again, um, you always need the right tool for the right job. So when you're going through heavy duty stuff, use heavy duty tools. This is a hobbyist. 
tool for short durations, not long durations and stuff like that. And again, my philosophy is if it was destined for the trash, why not take it apart? You, you can't make it any worse. It's dead. Um, so I'm Karen and I fix things and sometimes I break them and sometimes I'm able to fix them too. Thanks again. Um, if you want, subscribe. That would be fantastic.